Now you know the basic building blocks of writing the game. Even though this game is going to be very basic, it's good to get into the habit of planning various elements of the game. From general ideas you want to keep in mind, to what graphics will be needed, and how you want to structure it. As a note, a lot of the example code I've shared is very bare bones and not very object oriented. A lot of things, like the input and the timer class, can be handled easier and cleaner with the use of classes. Later in this video, I will try to show you some examples. Keep in mind that your game doesn't have to be pick and sticks. The game just has a character collecting objects. Your game can have a cat collecting fish, or a peanut butter sandwich collecting shoe stores. It's up to you. I like to write design documents with Google Docs because I can access them anywhere that has internet access. Google Docs are also shareable so that multiple people can work on a design doc together. I didn't really start writing design documents until I found some that Al Lowe had available on his site. Al Lowe was the designer behind Leisure Suit Larry as well as Torn's Passage and Freddy Farkas, so it's pretty neat looking at the design docs behind them. My docs are a lot more generalized, but they're good for getting ideas out of your head and on paper, or computer. Here's what mine usually look like. First, the title or secret project name in big bold letters. Yay! And a table of contents, which Google Docs, as well as Microsoft Word and OpenOffice can create and update for you. The first section tends to be general ideas for features and goals, or a sort of brainstorming section for throwing out random stuff. Afterwards, I might get into game setting, what the world's like, and the game characters. From there, the docs tend to get more technical. It tends to have lists of locations, characters, items, and even what sorts of tiles I'm planning on needing. Of course, it's hard to plan all this out in the beginning, but it helps to have a general idea of what you need to start off. From there, the graphics. I'll need X amount of walking frames for each direction for each player, plus attack animations for every direction, Pick up animations, death animations, level up animations, and so on and so forth. I need these tiles, these items, these background images, and these menu elements. This should be done with sound effects and music as well. Item pickup noise, player damage noise, enemy damage noise, collision noise, etc. Of course, pick and sticks is pretty simplistic, so we'll only have a handful of each resource. After that, on to coding specifics. What kind of objects will there be in the game? Player class, enemy class, item class, system class, input class, timer class, image manager class, sound manager class, menu class, stuff like that. But, how do we know how to structure the game? Alright, time to try to summarize one of the hardest parts of game design. How to organize and structure everything, and having things interconnected while still being readable and hopefully also efficient. I'm also trying to keep this general so you can get an idea of how to structure more than just pick and sticks. All games consist around a loop of some sort. For our game, we should have a while loop that checks to see if the game is done, and continues looping while it is not. Inside the loop, we check for player input, update elements of the game like maybe gravity acting on objects in our future games, drawing everything to the buffer, and drawing the buffer to the screen. Obvious objects in our game are the sort of things you immediately think about as objects. This includes the player and any characters, and the items, and the level. At this point, the player and the stick classes won't really have enough in common to warrant having them inherit from a base object sort of class. But you might think about this for later games, such as having a base character class and having player and enemy classes inherit from that. If you're using Allegro, you want to write a rectangle class, or struct, to handle the object coordinates and the collision regions. Level classes are generally made up of an array of tiles, with each tile having coordinates, as well as a rectangle to hold its coordinates on the tile sheet. You might also have a boolean to tell whether it's solid or not. For pick and sticks, I probably wouldn't even write a level class. Instead, I would just write a couple of for loops to draw grass tiles all over the background. Helper objects are less obvious, but can be extremely helpful for organizing your game. Remember that modularity is desirable in game design, and usually with any coding projects, 
and you shouldn't just pile everything in main. It's useful to have classes like Image Manager, Sound Manager, and Level Manager in your game. These should all hold the images, sound, or levels in your game. In the constructor, they'll load in all the resources, and in the destructors, they'll free all the resources. For now, you can either keep your image and sound objects in main, but I'd suggest having an image and sound manager class like this. And when you go to draw something, it will be like this, where you call imageManager.Player to get the player image. Yeah, that's a little bit messy. For now, it'll work fine if you want to. But cleaning it up is one of the motives behind wrapping everything in objects. You can also write a draw function in the image manager class and just pass it the buffer, which image, and the player's coordinate rectangle as well as frame and direction. While not necessary, I'll usually have a system class that initializes the library in the constructor and closes the library in the destructor. It should also hold a boolean for full screen and maybe an enumeration to keep track of the game state, and a function for toggling full screen also. For the game state enumeration, I just have stuff like quit, menu, paused, in-game, game over. For prick and sticks, it'd be more like just in-game and quit, and maybe a super basic menu. For your project, you can also write a timer or input class if you want, but at this point it's not really necessary. The game's going to be pretty basic, so you won't really have any complex code behind them. So that was sort of a brief overview of game structure you might think about while writing a game. If you have any questions, be sure to post or email me. Next video, we're wrapping up!